In the 1960s, NASA faced a monumental challenge, how to land a bus-sized spacecraft on the moon, 240,000 miles away. With no map, no practice facility, and no easy answers, the stakes were incredibly high. The problem was simple physics, but the engineering unknowns were terrifying. Apollo needed a ship that could descend through the void and stop just inches above the lunar dust. This wasn't just a technological race, it was a battle against the very laws of physics. Initial proposals were massive and complex, often deadly in their ambition. Direct ascent required a gigantic Nova rocket, but building it on time was impossible. Then there was Earth Orbit Rendezvous, where multiple rockets would assemble the lander in orbit, a risky gamble with lives on the line. You might not know this, but the moon landing was saved by an unlikely hero, John Hubolt. He was just a mid-level engineer with a radical idea called Lunar Orbit Rendezvous. At first, people laughed at him, thinking it was too crazy to work. Instead of landing the whole spacecraft, he proposed a tiny lunar module would detach in orbit. This little module would descend alone and then rendezvous with the command module. They told him to drop it, but he didn't back down. He sent memo after memo, even writing directly to NASA's associate administrator. His plea was simple. Do you want to land on the moon or not? Hubbolt's vision reduced the mission's complexity by 90%. Finally, they listened, and the Spider was born. This was the first ship designed to fly only in a vacuum, and it changed everything. It all came down to this moment on July 20th, 1969. The Eagle was descending, and alarms started flashing, 12.01 and 12.02. The onboard computer was overloaded, confused by too many inputs. Most would have aborted the mission, but not Steve Bales. He recognized the codes and said, we're go on that alarm. The descent continued, but the danger was far from over. Armstrong peered out the window and panic set in. The computer was guiding them toward a massive crater, a no-go zone. With less than two minutes of fuel left, Armstrong took control. He flew the Eagle horizontally, skimming over the rocks. His heart raced to 150 beats per minute, searching for a safe landing. The next challenge was training the pilot for the lunar module. It was so lightweight and delicate that nothing on Earth could replicate its feel. NASA's solution? The infamous Lunar Landing Training Vehicle, or LLTV. This beast was terrifying, using a jet engine to counteract gravity. Tiny rockets mimicked the LM's precise throttle control, but it was notoriously unstable, with a history of failures. Astronauts called it the Flying Bedstead, or the greatest firecracker ever built. It was designed to push pilots to their limits. The most notable incident involved Neil Armstrong in 1968. While training at 200 feet, his LLTV malfunctioned violently. With seconds to react, he activated the ejection seat just before impact. His skill with this dangerous machine helped him become commander of Apollo 11. He truly survived the school of hard knocks. The low-level alerts blared, 60 seconds, 30 seconds. Fuel reserves were nearly gone. Then, a light flashed on the panel. The landing probes had touched the dust. Armstrong killed the engine. A moment of silence hung in the air. Then came the iconic message to a breathless world. Houston, tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. The landing was completed with just 25 seconds of fuel left. The most complex engineering challenge ever attempted by mankind was won by a few seconds of quick thinking. It was a triumph over a wildly unstable craft. The success of Apollo wasn't just about technology. It was about relentless engineering persistence. It taught us three vital lessons. First, trust the radical thinkers like John Hubolt. Second, test the limits until failure is understood, even if it nearly costs you your commander. And third, in a crisis, there's no substitute for human control. Today, as NASA's Artemis program prepares for our return to the moon, they're not starting from scratch. They're building on the shoulders of engineers who dared to ask the impossible, and the pilot who landed the impossible machine. The impossible was just an engineering problem waiting for a brilliant solution.